what what sort of issues concerned you that that interested you in this Occupy Wall Street in the movement? Occupy Atlanta movement. Yeah. All right. Um, well, a lot of issues. Basically, I'm after two years ago. I started to study about all of this. I picked up a few books, watched a few documentaries, got tired of um, all the control being in a handful of people's in a in a handful of people's hands, basically. And there's nothing we can do about it. We can people are like, just vote, just vote. We can't really just vote for a politician because the system's been so maneuvered and mutated into something that we have no say in. So no matter if we vote, we don't know who to vote for because every politician has dollar bills from you know corporations, not all corporations, but the main, the high hierarchy. And it doesn't trickle down because they just gain the money and keep it. And <laughs> and basically I was tired of that. I was tired of just sitting back and watching and not being able to do anything about it. I, I tell everyone here, I had a cynical ball in my stomach and over those two years it just kept growing and growing and the more I couldn't do anything about it, the more it just hurt. And recently I watched a video called 2012 Time for Change, which made me really hopeful and I had to keep watching these almost like being fed with an IV, I had to be connected with hope and inspiration or else I would just remain in a cynical coma and not know, think that there's nothing we could do. But I quit my job, I ended up just learning from every book that I could. I would read about five books at a time just to digest everything that I could about everything going around me. I wanted to know the truth. And I don't just stick my foot in one thing and agree with anything that anyone says. I keep my mind open so it uh, keeps me unlimited so I can just, I can realize the truth and feel it. You know, I just want a collective, I just want to know everything so I can help as much as I can and even help inspire if that's possible. But as soon as this happened, I realized like-minded individuals who were tired of the same thing were getting together. And that's what we needed. That was the main thing we needed. It, because whenever people are tired of everything, they sit and think, well, nobody else is with me on this. And we, I can't make a change. I'm just one little person and I'm just a blip on the radar. I'm just a statistic to everyone above me. They don't care. The system isn't for us anymore, and we need to get it back to the people. The people need to find their voice, which we have here. And people are saying everyone needs to wake up. They do need to wake up. Not, it's, it's just, we all need to be here and have the conversation and the discussions that we're avoiding. Fear of, you know, whenever everyone thought the earth was flat, everyone was scared you'd fall off the edge. But whenever we found out that it was round, you could go out and explore and it just, it changes the world, you know? We need a complete paradigm shift. It, and what I tell them is, sure, you can try to vote and vote for politicians, but if you, there's a vehicle and it's, something's wrong with it and the design or whatnot, if it's, if the vehicle's flawed, no matter who's driving it, it doesn't matter who you swap out. The vehicle's gonna fail. We need to get out of the vehicle, find new transportation, find a new way of doing things, and then when everyone gets on board, then you can choose a direction. And that's how you move on. What, um, I noticed last night that you joined the circle of the um, people who were waiting to be arrested because the police had said that they would arrest anybody who remained in the park. Yeah. Um, and you were one of the last people to join the circle. You weren't there originally. Yeah. Could you explain why? It was really difficult. Um, before I left, I actually ran home after three days of occupying to just get a shower after school, um, pet my kitties, you know, because it always consoles me. <laughs> and just, uh, actually I've been cut off, so I wanted to go uh, look around on the internet to see what the news was saying. Of course, Fox News, just wanted to see what they were splitting into uh, stories. And to try to get more people out here too. 
But um, I had so many things to do. I had so many things I wanted to bring back here. Um, but all of a sudden, I get a message and an email saying that the police are going to come and try to evict us at 11. So I rushed back here, forgot a blanket, um, forgot a couple of things I wanted to donate, and just try to be here in solidarity so we didn't get pushed off the park. Because, I mean, we're not doing anything. And uh, basically, I came up here, saw what was going on, and before I got out of the car, my friend told my boyfriend, she said, I promise I'm not going to let her get arrested, which I didn't agree to because I don't know what's going to happen, you know. And I don't want to get arrested either, but um, I, was on, I was in the middle, and she was going to go on the sides because we split into two groups, you know, of course. one who could risk it, one who couldn't risk it, whether it's jobs or whatever. So um, the others who couldn't risk it went on the sidelines to um, rally and uh, have their voices heard and keep the rhythm going and our spirits high. And us who joined the middle, well, I was in between. And I, it, it, I joined late because I was conflicted. You know, I, I'm here and I'm occupying and I came to be with everyone because I'm sick and tired of everything that's going on and I want to make a change. I'm tired of stepping back and letting someone else decide what's going to happen to everybody around the world. This whole thing, who's going to decide what's going to happen with my life? I mean, I've just turned 25, which means I just started having my life in my own hands for a couple of years. And I have yet to have my voice heard on what I want to do. I didn't create everything around me. It's been created by the people before me. And I want to have my input. I want to change, make things for the better. So I was, OK, I was in the middle. And each step that I took towards the sidelines got harder and harder. And it was really painful. And my eyes started to well up because I. I didn't want to, I wanted to be in the middle. I, because what if they didn't have enough people in the middle and it, it screwed this all up? I, I wanted to help them, you know, they needed mass. So I hugged my friend and she knew that I was hugging her to say, well, I guess I'll see you later. And she was like, okay, well, I'm going to tell your boyfriend that you ran off <laughs> and I had nothing to do about it. So I stepped over the line took a deep breath, and the more I walked over to the circle, the more it felt right. And I was like, this is what this is about. It's about walking forward and not being on the sidelines and just dealing with the, everything that everyone else is doing and just watching. And I talked to a lot of people who were on the sidelines. And they said they, they just got angry watching and not being a part of it, and they were just pissed off that we were put in this situation that had us divided, not only divided, but that we have to fight for these things. Because we have the know-how and we have everything we need. We have the technology to have an amazing world. We could create a Garden of Eden, basically. Everything. A utopia. But we've got to be here and fight. And we're here for people who don't realize that yet. We're here for people that do realize but can't be a part of it, and we're here for ourselves. So when I joined everybody, I asked, I was like, is there room for one more? And of course they obliged, so yes, please. And I sat down, I linked arms, and I got to know my neighbors. Because if we're making history, I told them, I said, okay, well, Matt and Ben, I guess that's, I'm gonna be writing in my journal tonight that I was linking arms with Matt and Ben for this movement. And I think the most emotional part is we were all in there, we were really nervous, but we knew we were standing up and we were doing the right thing. And even though we had butterflies, we had grins all around. And uh, people were taking pictures, you had flashes. And at one moment after, you know, they were chanting all kinds of things and uh, giving us support, it got silent. And somebody said to everybody over there in the circle, we love you guys. And at that moment, my eyes start welling up, and I couldn't, I could, I had to let go. So basically tears rolled down my cheeks. And I look around and everybody's eyes are red and watering. And we, we really felt it. And I realized that moment also, that this is big. 
This is huge. And this is for everybody involved, even the 1%, who should also wake up from whatever dimension they're in and realize that people are human beings and we're all in this world together. We occupy the same planet and we all can work together. And they can't be happy. Sure, they're greedy, but they're conflicted and they have all this money, but money doesn't make people happy and they've got to know it. And even though they're distracted and wound up in their games, they should join us too because humanity is meant to be together. We're meant to be tribal. We're meant to be surrounded by love and inspiration and diversity. But yeah.